Hey everybody and welcome to this episode of Bama Blitz and hopefully the last Tuesday night episode that we'll be doing here, Luke, is we have plans to be moving to every day starting next Monday at 11 o'clock every day. We'll be going in front of Auburn Blitz. So um, next Monday, the plan is to be going from 11 to 12 starting every weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And, uh, you know, we look forward to that and Hopefully, we're going to be in a good mood next week when that happens. Yeah, I mean, I'm, look, I'm, I'm resigned to being in a good mood. I shouldn't say resigned, but I'm going to be in a good mood regardless because um, I'm going to ride this wave that Nick Saban has put us on, and I'm going to keep going happily along as long as he's the coach. But, yeah, I think it would certainly be a lot happier if we bring home a W from Baton Rouge. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, you know, without a doubt, going to be the toughest test for Alabama this year going down to Baton Rouge and – facing off against the LSU Tigers, who are going to come in at 7-1 and one with their only loss being to Florida. And, you know, when you think back this weekend, Florida, to me, showed that they're a better team than I thought a lot of people thought going into the year. Even though they, you know, the ending score is 36-17 against Georgia, if there's a couple turnovers that don't happen in that game, it's a lot different game between those two. You know, I took a lot uh, away from uh, Florida and Georgia in the sense that Florida – had the goal line stand essentially two series of goal line stands because they got a pass interference penalty, so they had to do it all again. Um, I was very impressed by that. I was not impressed with Felipe Franks. I, I think he showed more of exactly what he is. He's come down a little bit from uh, what he what a lot of people thought he had improved to. But I think players are a lot like teams, and I've always said you play your best a couple of times a year, you play your worst a couple of times a year, and everything else is what you are. And um, so far we've seen that out of Florida, they've, they've maybe played their best against LSU or at least close to it, uh, considering what is leading them at the quarterback position. And uh, he sort of came back to the norm, and I think eventually that's what cost him. Yeah, you know, um, really a costly turnover early in the game that gave Georgia the 10-0 to lead there early and then had another one late, but uh, able to get a big goal line stand, like you said. One of the more impressive goal line stands that I've seen in my lifetime from them having to do six, seven plays, keeping them out of the end zone. But, uh, you know, ultimately Georgia was able to pull away in that game. But to me, I haven't been as impressed with Georgia this year as I think a lot of people thought going into the year, which I said going into the season that, Georgia was going to have struggles. When you lose 30 players the way they did and lose the players they lost, when you think of Chubb, Michelle, when you think of Roquan uh, Smith, Smith, linebacker, I mean, they lost a lot of good players off that team, and everybody just kind of thought they were just ready to plug and replace, and to me, they're not on that level yet. You know, they're going to get there with Kirby recruiting, but they're not on that level yet, and I think it's shown a little bit throughout the year with the game against Missouri, then you have the game at LSU where they were – pretty much dominated. I mean, they turned the ball over a few times and gave LSU some points, but they were really dominated in that game. And then this weekend, really, without Florida turning the ball over, they would have had a chance to lose that one. Well, I'm not turning this into a Georgia show, but I, it just made me think, how many times has Georgia gone into a pretty raucous environment and come out on top, even these last two years? Um, I would say, uh, do you want to call Notre Dame last year? I, there were as many Georgia fans there as there were Notre Dame fans. Obviously, I think their toughest road trip last year was Auburn, and they were beat down. Their toughest road trip this year so far has been LSU, and they were beat down. You hope that's not a trend if you're a Georgia fan. But um, one other thing that's happening over there that you could transition this back into Alabama is how the quarterback dynamic has affected that team's psyche, at least allegedly. I'm not in the Georgia locker room, but I can sure tell you that the rumors abound about the relationship between Fields and certain players, Justin Fields, and then um, Fromm and certain players, and how some players think Fields should be getting more time, some recruits feel like Fields should be getting more time. You know, but I think he's in a bit of a, a pinch, just like Saban was. I mean, Fromm is, for the most part, still winning his games, and so how do you take him out? And if you take him out and Fields does worse, have you even uh, – throwing yourself further into a, a hole. So I think that's where Kirby Smart is right now. But it, it what it does is make me appreciate even more how Nick Saban handled the Jalen Hurts situation and how Jalen Hurts and Tua Tungvaluwa handled that situation. Yeah, and the whole team as a whole. You know, I mean, the team was able to get behind either one of those guys. And, you know, I've said it all year, and it may be a little biased, but I, I really believe that the two best quarterbacks in the SEC play for the University of Alabama. And I'm happy about it. And, uh, 
you know, that was one thing was, uh, you know, Jalen Hurts yesterday, Saban was asked about Jalen. They said that Jalen didn't really run a lot at practice yesterday, which, you know, I'm not really getting concerned about that yet. But going into this game, I actually do think that Jalen may be needed in this game against LSU in certain situations. I'm not saying that two is going to get hurt and he's going to have to come in and play, but I think that there's going to be some situations, especially early in the game with Devin White out, where it may present itself that Jalen's able to come in and run the ball from the quarterback position because we saw Mississippi State have some success against LSU doing that. Yeah, they, they had a little bit of success with it, and they, but they were going up – the quarterback they were going against – uh, is a little bit different. I would say Jalen Hurts certainly better than Nick Fitzgerald this year, at least. I mean, it may be at times last year he wasn't, but this year certainly is. But I think this is going to be a game where Tua Tungvaluwa is going to play the majority. And I think he's going to play into the fourth quarter. Uh, if he's not playing in the fourth quarter, then, I mean, I don't know. It has to be some kind of massive blowout, which I, I don't really see that happening. And I don't see it happening, not because I don't think Alabama's good enough and and I don't think LSU is – is because I think LSU is that great. But Alabama hadn't scored more than 27 in Baton Rouge during Saban's tenure. And that 27 points came in overtime. Mm -hmm. So my, my point is that, okay, we hadn't had an offense like this in any of those times. But we did have some names like, you know, Julio Jones and Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson and on down the list. Um, and they weren't able to break that 30-point barrier. And this LSU team is, I mean, they've got some pretty stout defensive backs. Greedy Williams is a guy that's going to go in the top five probably in the NFL draft next year. So I feel like uh, it's going to be a lot tougher sledding. This is easily the best team and the toughest uh, matchup Alabama's had all year. So I, I think I would, I'm going to say Alabama scores in the 30s, but I don't think they get into the 50s like some people predict. No, I don't know if Alabama's going to get in the 50s. This LSU defense is a lot better than I think outside people think. I think a lot of people in the media understand how good LSU's defense is when you watch, you know, ESPN, those type of networks, and hear what they have to say about it. But, you know, this LSU team is, is better than a lot of people thought going into the year, and I think they're better right now than a lot of Alabama fans even think that they are. I mean, you know, you look at it, Auburn – They've kind of shown that they were overrated at the time that LSU played them. And I think LSU's defeat of them has helped their season kind of snowball a little bit. You know, if Auburn's able to hang on in that game, all of a sudden their year's a little bit different. They probably go to Mississippi State and win, and you never know. I mean, they could be sitting undefeated right now. That lost LSU, they're, you know, I mean, because they're a place – they're a momentum team, Auburn is. And when they're, when they're riding the wave, they're going strong. But when that wave crashes, they really crash. And so – you know, that win for LSU is huge. Miami, to me, has shown they were really, really overrated going into the year. But they do have the win over Georgia at home, and they, they dominated Georgia in that game. And they were able to put up 36 points against Georgia. And I don't really think anybody saw that coming in that game. No, but Georgia's defense, as you said, is not the same thing it once was. Um, and I think that game began to get a little bit out of hand as time wore on. And, um, and that's the – look – Here's the other thing, and we can talk about this because the uh, college football playoff rankings will be coming out, the first ones tonight. And we'll find out who you have for your four and who I have for my four, who I, what I predict it'll be, who I think it should be, I should say. And then, but I've heard this so often this year. So-and-so is overrated. This team shouldn't be theirs. Listen to Auburn Blitz the other day. Well, we all know LSU is the number four team in the country, even though that's where they're ranked. Who is? Who is? <laughs> properly rated. I mean, I think Alabama is. I think Clemson, if they're at two, they're properly rated. You've got to put somebody in these other slots. And it's not their fault. It's not LSU's fault that they are probably not traditionally one. They wouldn't traditionally be one of the top four teams in the country this year. You know, on many given years, there, there are teams that look better than they do, have better quarterback play than they do, have a better coach than they do. Or Notre Dame at number three. I, I mean, I'm telling you right now, if you say pick a team that, you know, pick a viable team to be in the playoffs that you want to play in the playoffs, I'm picking Notre Dame first. I'd rather play them than Oklahoma by a long shot. I mean, if I was really ranking this on teams that I thought had a shot to win it, you know, take out the merit, take out the, the other stuff, I'm putting Oklahoma in the top four, without a doubt, probably number three. Um, but – I'm all for Alabama's play in Notre Dame or, God forbid, UCF. I'd, I'd love UCF to get in there, ironically, because I think Alabama would wax them. 
at the same time, I don't think they deserve to be there, so I don't want them there. I want the teams that deserve to be there to be there. No, I'd have to agree but with that. But my point goes back to everybody loves to use the term overrated. And I'm trying to figure out, I think at this point now, you kind of are what you are. I mean, I think LSU probably deserves to be in the top four to top six. If you told me you're going to have them as your number six team, okay. But they're not – they've got some nice wins. Yeah, Miami has turned out not to be what we thought they would be. Uh, and their season has kind of fallen off. Um, certainly the win at Auburn looks the, – the shines off of that a little bit more with Tennessee winning there as well. Um, the win against Georgia, uh, people have knocked that because that's the only team Georgia's played. And so – that's the other thing I love to say is people always say, well, who have you played? Well, if you've played somebody and then you beat them and they fall in the rankings, people automatically think they're no good anymore. So uh, my point is, I think LSU is pretty doggone good. Do I think if, if you were saying, I think this year is an anomaly, that Alabama is much better than everybody. I think Clemson is next on that list. And then I think there is a gap, like a monstrous cavernous gap. Um, that's not to say that Alabama and Clemson can't be upset. I just think that uh, the, the talent-wise and production-wise and what we've actually seen put on the film, put on the field, Alabama and Clemson is Alabama, nice little gap, Clemson, and then a huge gap. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. You know, I mean, and if you want to talk about who people have played and stuff, then to me, everybody loves to point to Alabama, and that's because there's a lot of Alabama hate, but you look at Clemson, and Clemson really hasn't played much of anybody. I mean, they look good, and we're talking about the eye test, and that's what I go by, and Clemson is a good team. We know that. Their defense is good. They've got players that are going to get drafted, but they really haven't played anybody, and it's because the ACC is weak. The I mean, ACC is, is surprisingly awful. It's very awful. I mean, when you got Wake Forest beating Louisville 56 to 35, then your conference ain't very good. No, well, I mean, not only that, I mean, uh, Virginia Tech losing to Old Dominion, I mean – you know, Pittsburgh, what in the world was going on there? What's going on at UNC? They've only got one win. Uh, Miami's losing games left and right. Here's – and I don't want to spin this into – my. I always go on a rant about I don't want to expand the playoffs. I don't want to expand the playoffs if you don't know that. Here's why I don't. Northwestern is leading their division and has a good shot to make it the Big Ten championship game. Um, and Virginia has a good chance to make it from the ACC side. And I, Virginia either has two or three losses, and I know Northwestern has three. And they could have another one because I think they play Notre Dame this week, which doesn't count against their record, I mean, their, their conference record. So they could win the conference theoretically with four losses. And so people want automatic qualifiers, and you could have a four-loss team playing for a national championship. That's unfair on a million different levels. And um, it's, not ju it's just not the way to do this. And Al football is not basketball. Basketball invites just about everybody, and so be it. That's what basketball has, has turned into, a huge money grab. And it's a sport that can do that, too. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a sport that you can play tournaments, whereas in football, you don't see tournaments. I mean, yeah. that's just not what you see. So, you know, I 100% agree with you. I don't think that it should be expanded. If it does, it needs to go to six teams, and that's the max. I mean, that's – you don't really need to get any further than that. And I, I'm with you on the automatic qualifiers. I don't think there's any need for automatic qualifiers because – it's not like the NFL where you have a small amount of teams and you have divisions and you play in those divisions. But, I mean, even in the NFL, I'm not 100% for what they do in the NFL because you have teams that can be 10 Seven and, and 6. Nine. Yeah. Seven and 9, Seven and nine get, get, in. get in over teams that are 10 and 6 just because they won their division. So, And that's not who you want to see. You want to see the best playing in these playoffs. And I think with college football right now, you have the best teams playing in the playoff each year. And I, I think it's good. I think it's great debate to have teams that are left out and say, you know, do better next year. Yeah. You know, that's what you do. And, and you know, the one team that could say something is probably UCF. But my argument there would be you have to do what it takes to get bigger teams on your schedule. You have to go there and not have a return trip. You have to go play in a neutral site. You have to do, you know, play on, on Tuesday night. Whatever you got to do, that's what you need to do. But going back to this game, um, I'm hoping my fingers are crossed that I'm going to get to go to it. I'm sort of last second thing. I'm hoping I get to go to it. Um, and I, I'm dying to go because I think the environment's going to be like oh, nothing yeah. you've ever seen. I've been to a lot of Alabama LSU games. I went in, let me see, I guess it was 91. 
Uh, David Palmer had a huge 90 yard uh, kick return in that punt return for a touchdown in that one. Uh, I've been in 90, I want to say 98 when Alabama uh, had the onside kick and they got the onside and Sean Alexander scored a big touchdown uh, before he really had his bust out year in 99. Uh, been a, two or three other times and always had a pretty good time. I went uh, a couple years ago when Blake Sims had to come back and then I went two years ago when we won 10 to nothing behind Jalen Hurts. So, I mean, I, I've been to that game a fair amount of times and it's, it's a lot of fun. Have you ever been? No, I've never been to Baton Rouge before. I've been to Alabama LSU, and my only game I went to was Jamarcus Russell throwing the touchdown in the end zone in overtime in 2005. That was in Tuscaloosa, yeah. And that was a hard. I was there for that one. That one hurt. You remember the plane flying over for that? Yeah, one? it was so low. Yeah, it was but super um, low. anyway, it is uh, Baton Rouge. Kind of is a special place. I mean, really, you could say that about everywhere in the SEC. I mean, I don't know about Missouri or Arkansas or A and M because I've been to those places, but I've been just about everywhere else. And I think every place has its own charm and, and, you know, the antebellum fraternity and sorority houses and all that stuff. Pretty cool. But LSU is, is incredibly unique in that they, the solidarity there for the school is like nothing you'll ever see. I mean, I know Auburn fans may disagree with me, but LSU fans defend their university differently. I mean, they, they are the state school, and so they, they look at, like, they keep the whole state, and that's why when Saban goes in there and steals a recruit, is such a big deal. But um, they are going to – I can tell you what they're going to do when we go there. They're going to probably throw some drinks on us. They're probably going to – I vividly remember this last time, and I went with some other folks from Atlantic City, and they'll attest to it. I mean, I'm talking about college-age girls who know better, who aren't drunk yet will just come right to your face, cuss you out, and shoot a bird in your face and record them doing it. It's, it's like it's typical. I'm going to say six or seven people did that. I mean, and we're not – it's not like we're waving shakers going down. We barely have on any crimson. I mean, we know better. I've been there enough to know, you know, you can sport – you know, do a little something. Just don't go nuts. And uh, it, it was how many years ago when – an Auburn fan went down there in his van and had a tiger tail and somebody yeah. lit it on fire and the whole van's in flames, next thing you know. So, yeah, it's, it's – but the other side of that is they do all that, and then generally if you don't start a fight with them, they'll generally say, you know, hey, just come have some gumbo with us, come chill with us for a second, and they'll still make fun of you and they'll still, you know, say some stuff about you, and it's probably not the best idea to talk back to them. But – you know, you can sort of get in, involved. Now, when the game kicks off, it's a different animal. I mean, they're going to be at you again. But if you can get up just 14 to nothing, it'll make a difference. Yeah, you know, I've heard from people that have been down there, they say it's really a great experience down there. And they say when night games like this happen, that throughout the day, LSU fans are some of the nicest people you'll see. They'll invite you to their tailgate. They said at around 4 o'clock, all of a sudden, something clicks. And they know it's getting close to game time. And they just become a different animal. And, and honestly, I would love to see that. I, I, I want to go to a game in Baton Rouge and experience that atmosphere. And, you know, talking about the atmosphere, I was talking to my brother today and got to thinking about, I mean, without a doubt, this is going to be the, the best atmosphere Alabama's been in yet this year. And really the experience in these type of games right now goes to LSU this season. Um, LSU played against Miami. They played against Georgia. And they just got done playing against – or they played against Florida as well. And – you know, they've been in these type of big games already this year, whereas Alabama really hasn't. I mean, the best team they've played is Texas a and And not that we don't have the experience. I mean, we've been in the national yeah, championship. Experience. We've been in the playoffs. But I'm talking about this season with this team right now, you would have to say yeah. the experience goes to LSU and okay. playing in these type of games. Well, not only that, I mean, we played in some big games. I mean, the Texas A&M game, I would say, was a big game, especially at that moment when A&M was coming off a very narrow defeat, maybe even controversial defeat at the hands of Clemson. But, you know, our stadium has gotten incredibly spoiled. We don't show up to games as much. I'll talk about that a little bit. We don't fill it up quite as often. We're not, you know, you don't have any more sellouts for A-Day in Alabama yeah. right now. We expect to, to blow out the competition practically every time. Uh, it has spoiled us all. And so when the, the loudest you hear us is when we groan because our team did something we didn't think was perfection. And that's a problem. LSU's not going to be that way. They're going to be pretty feverish. And I think they also know – I mean, they know they're 14-and-a-half point underdogs in this game. They're not blind. And they're, they, they are going to know that the, the players are going to feed off their energy. 
They are going, and it's going to be a seven o'clock kick. They are going to be energized as they can be, intoxicated as they can be, and it's going to be a scene, man. Um, so, and it, how is Tua going to deal with that? Um, I think is the one thing everybody's asking. You know, people forget he did come in for the second half national championship game, probably the most intense environment you can come in. But that was about a you know 50-50 split. It may have been 55-45 Georgia. It may have been, but it's pretty close to half and half. Um, and people didn't know necessarily what to prepare for. They knew a little bit. They didn't know what exactly to prepare for. Now they know what to prepare for. They also know – He's got a bit of a weakness in, or a perceived weakness in the knee issue. So you know that, I mean, I'm not saying LSU is going to play dirty, but it's human nature. If you know, for instance, you're playing basketball and the guy you're going against has, a, you know, is weak with his left arm, you're going to make him go left. Yeah. You know, if you know he has a weak knee, you're at least going to give the perception that, hey, I'm coming after you. And I'm, 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 I'm going to hit through the whistle. And I don't blame them. That's that's kind of football. So uh, I think it's good. It's a good test for two. I think the big question a lot of people would ask is, if Alabama were to lose, God forbid, then where exactly would they fall in terms of the playoffs? Because uh, let's assume they went out from that point forward. But they would need help from LSU. They, LSU would have to lose another game to get the SEC championship for Alabama too. Um but in, what if LSU doesn't lose another game? Would Alabama and LSU get in if LSU won out, including another rematch with Georgia, and uh, Alabama wins out convincingly against State, uh, Citadel, and Auburn? Would the committee be able to do that, again, knowing full well that Alabama is one of the top four teams in the country? I mean, there's no doubt about that. But the resume may not be there this year. Well, what it's going to take is it's going to take Michigan losing again, and it's going to take LSU beating Georgia in the SEC championship. It would take Notre Dame losing. So they would have to have some help. I, you know, another thing that would be interesting is you got Oklahoma sitting there, but they have one loss. And if what if it comes down to Alabama and Oklahoma on who gets in? You know, I mean, I feel like the eye test would tell you Alabama, but then you'd have Oklahoma sitting there winning their conference. Well, winning their conference, probably either beating Texas twice or West Virginia twice, something like that. Well, I mean, they lost Texas. I understand they lost Texas, but I'm saying they would they would get to play them again in the yeah, same Yeah, 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 okay. So, I mean, or West Virginia twice. You know, they play West Virginia last game of the year, and then they might have to turn around and play them the very next week. Um, you know, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Hopefully that's not an issue yeah. at all. But. And, and, you know, when you look at it, and I, and I have some stats written down here, and uh, it's just hard for me to really see Alabama going down there and losing. Now, it, you know, it's a different game. Things can happen. Alabama's without a doubt going to have to weather the storm early. LSU's going to come out hard. They're going to come out emotional. And that's one thing that when you watch big Alabama games on the road, they do a very good job of. They weather the storm early. And they never – you don't ever see quitting. I mean, you know, we got down – it's 2009, but we got down 14 nothing to Auburn. Yeah. Everybody's just calm. Here they come back. They get down 13 nothing to Georgia last year in the national championship. Just calmly come back. So, you know – Alabama averaging 54.1 points per game. LSU only averaging 30.4. Both of them giving up 15 points per game. Alabama, and everybody keeps talking about Alabama's run game and how it's not as strong as it's been. Alabama's averaging 5.2 yards per carry right now. They, what it is is they've just split up uh, the running duties. And the other thing is, I mean, the passing game is so potent. I, mean, what, we, I wonder what our longest run is this year. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I need to look that up. I feel like Damian busted one against somebody. He had a long run against Ole Miss. Yeah. Uh, on like third play of the game. And um, for a touchdown, it was a 40-some-odd yards, I think. That may be the longest run of the year. I mean, uh, I think Najee Harris is our leading rusher at 460 yeah. yards or but, something. But, I mean, you look at it and all, really all three of them have around that same amount of yardage, you know, for the most part. And – uh you know, it's interesting because I felt like as the year's kind of gone on, I think Damian Harris is the number one back. But Josh Jacobs, to me, is starting to establish himself as maybe the best back out of all no, three of them, that. being able to do everything. And, uh, you know, he got started early against Tennessee with the return and really got hot. And that first drive was all him. And, I mean, he carried the load on that first drive and, and was impressive doing that. Um, LSU averaging 4.3 yards per rush. And to me, that's going to be something – to watch is 
how is our defense going to handle LSU lining up and running the football at us? Because we haven't really had anybody that's just lined up and done it besides Arkansas, and Arkansas had success doing it. They did. I, again, I'm going to take a little bit off of that just as people get worried about Arkansas for something like having some rushing success. I look at it like it's also difficult to get up for Arkansas at 11 o'clock in the morning when you know you can show up with your C game and still cover the spread. Now, I don't think Alabama did cover the spread because they, they scored late, Arkansas yeah. did. But they did play their C game, and they had a shot at it. So um, I'm trying to find who had the longest run. But uh, Najee Harris has 489 yards rushing on the season. Now, you know, Alabama's probably not going to get to a guy with 1,000 yards rushing. They just got too many guys they're handing the ball off too. Brian Robinson, surprisingly to me, has 241 yards this year. Yeah, and, you know, he's gotten a lot of carries late in the game, but he's another guy that if somebody were to go down, I wouldn't have any problem with Brian Robinson stepping in and running oh, yeah. the football. I mean, he, you know, to me, Alabama's got four guys right now that could start for anybody in the country. I mean, they would go anywhere in the country and they would be the starting running back. Mm -hmm. And that's a good problem to have. And, uh, you know, LSU's got a couple of good guys. Brissett's the, the guy for them, but they're not as deep at running back. And, you know, Burroughs, you look at his stats, I mean, they're only averaging 193 yards passing per game, and that's not impressive. And I look for us on defense to do what we've done in the last few years, which is crowd the box with eight guys and make the quarterback beat us. And I just don't know if he is capable enough to do that. Yeah, I, I don't think he is. Um, his stats certainly don't well. I think he's got six touchdowns and three picks, something mm -hmm. like that, or four picks. Um, he's He has he put the ball in the money a few times in the Auburn game, uh, even a couple of times in the LSU game, I mean in the L Florida game. Uh, Georgia game, he did okay as well. I think Georgia was as shell-shocked as they could be, though, and, and you know, momentum sort of carried them through there. I would be looking for more consistency uh, until I can believe that a quarterback like Joe Burrow is going to be able to beat Alabama. Now, that doesn't mean I, Alabama, this Alabama defense is not a vintage Alabama defense. It's a nice Alabama defense, but it's missing some pretty key components. Uh, obviously, they won't be back. Diggs won't be back uh, for this particular game. Um, uh, Terrell Hall won't be back for this game. I mean, uh, uh, you know. Chris Allen's another guy that would have played a yeah, good bit this I mean, year. Chris Allen certainly. Uh, won't be back. So, I mean, yeah, Alabama's going to be have some guys dinged up. I mean, Mac Wilson's still playing on that broken foot. But I like here's what I think it comes down to. I think Alabama's defense can stop LSU's offense more than the other way around. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, Joe Burrow could come out, and they have receivers capable enough to – he'd come out and play like Steven Garcia and just be on the money, and their receivers make a few plays, but they haven't done it to this point. And, you know, you expect that year after year going down there and you still really haven't seen it from them with, uh, with LSU. I mean, they just haven't had anybody step up and play really a great game against Alabama at the quarterback position. And, uh, you know, Burrow's athletic enough and capable enough to do it, but he hasn't shown enough to me for them to be able to do that. And then you look on the other side, you know, Alabama's averaging 216 yards rushing per game, 347 yards passing per game, and – I mean, they're right there averaging as many passing yards per game as LSU's averaging total yards per mm -hmm. game. And so, you know, LSU's going to hang with them early because they're good enough. But I think as the game wears on, Alabama's going to be able to pull away because of what they're going to be able to do offensively. Uh, and I, I think I was dead right here. The longest run we've had from scrimmage um, is 43 yards, Damian Harris, and that was that run against yeah. Ole Miss. And then Najee Harris had a 30-yarder. Uh, Josh Jacobs had an 18-yarder. Jalen Hurts had a 27-yarder. Uh, the longest run from Brian Robinson has been 20 yards. Um, wow, that is – I mean, when you see it like this, it's, it, it is rather shocking considering that receiving-wise, listen to some of these numbers, uh, that Jerry Judy's – I'm talking about just the long play for the year. As his longest play is 81 yards. Jalen Waddle is a 94-yarder, of course, from Mac Jones. Uh, Henry Ruggs, longest is 57. Devontae Smith is 57. Irv Smith had a 76-yarder. Damian Harris is at a 52-yarder. So receiving-wise, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players with plays longer than our longest rushing yard. Longest rushing uh, – what? The longest rushing total from scrimmage. Yeah. I mean, and it's not what we're used to seeing from Alabama, but this is just a different team. And, 
we knew that going into the year. We knew that when Tua got the nod and if Tua got the nod, that this team was going to be different. And Kirk Herbstreit said it before the year. He said, if Tua is the guy that trots out there, then I feel bad for opposing defenses. And he's been right for the most part. Yeah, you know, really, he's been right to this point. And, uh, you know, like we've said, it's going to be the toughest test for Alabama this year. You look at the defensive stats, Alabama giving up 113 rushing yards per game, LSU giving up 130. Alabama giving up 194 passing yards per game, LSU giving up 199. Alabama has given up 307 yards per game, which is something we're not used to seeing. But – like me and you have said week after week, that goes with we're scoring fast on offense, teams are getting the ball more, and this just isn't the vintage Alabama defense. Well, and I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm actually – if Alabama can score quickly a couple of times, I'm actually excited about the prospects of making Joe Burrow come from behind like that. Yeah. Um, I think that's where you can be a lot more opportunistic on defense. A uh, couple of comments through here, going back to the very beginning, Reed Slayton says, where will you see UCF ranked in the first CPF – CFP rankings, I, you know, look, I would probably put them at 10, but it's almost like a, an olive branch thing. I, and because I think the rest of college football is pretty mediocre at best. Um, but I've heard some uh, – Greg McElroy said on his show today this morning that if they're any higher than the 11, he's going to be upset uh, because he just doesn't think they deserve it. I mean, their opposition has been god-awful. They, they beat a Memphis team by one point. Uh, that Missouri thrashes later by 30 points. Um, and the transitive property doesn't always work because UCF beat Pittsburgh, worse than Notre Dame beat Pittsburgh. But um, it's just a, a, a thing that people can use against them. And um, some other folks on here have talked about some of the rude awakenings they've got in LSU. Uh, Reed said, I heard their fans are never friendly when you go to Baton Rouge. I, I wouldn't say never friendly. Um, I, I would say they're – you, if you can get through that first wave of negativity, you'll, you'll be okay. They want to see how tough you are. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> um, Justin Mosley said, I saw a lady get pegged by a hot dog in 2002. I was there in 2002 as well, and I have a hot dog story myself because it was freezing. That Dennis Franchoni yeah. was our coach. Saban was their coach, and we beat them. I want to say it was 31 to nothing, mm -hmm. um, and it was freezing cold. I mean, just beyond cold. Um, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this beach ball – comes up and we're in the upper deck comes out and people are bouncing the beach ball around and it's emptied out a pretty good bit. So, I mean, you know, the beach ball sort of hits on some bleachers and rolls away. Well, the beach ball eventually ended up in the lower deck and some drunk LSU fan said, when I have a beach ball, what's the next best thing? I'm going to throw this, take this hot dog out of the bun. We're going to throw it around. People were throwing the hot, catching it and throwing it. How it didn't break apart is I guess just because it was so cold. But people were just throwing the hot dog, and I just didn't want it near me. I didn't want that gross thing near me. And so finally somebody, a guy caught it, and he said, I have the wiener, and nobody's getting it from me. And I was like, if, you know what? I didn't think I'd hear that tonight, <laughs> but whatever. So, yeah, LSU is known for doing some different things with some, uh, with some uh, various concession food, I guess. Uh, Patrick Judkins, uh, I know he's an Auburn fan, said, let's go corn dogs. Um, <laughs> God, are you really? Are you too? I guess you probably are. I was going to say, are you to the point where, you know, the LSU team, you you want them to? Yeah, I think you said. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't That was a stupid question. He also agreed with me. UCF doesn't deserve to be in the playoffs um, with their schedule. He said we would be undefeated. I'm assuming he means Auburn. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. I, I mean, if I, I'd say there'd be a lot of teams that would be undefeated if they had UCF schedule. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, they hadn't played – a team that has a winning record to this point that, you know, has a, currently a winning record. So, I mean, that's why, you know, their AD keeps coming out saying it's a popularity contest and they're not getting any respect. Well, there's a reason you're not getting any respect. You're not playing nobody. That's, that's, and, that's, you know, it's, they can't help the fact that they've had two games the last two years get rained out against, you know, but, which five. would have been bad power five teams, by yeah, the way. Yeah, no. That Georgia team, Georgia Tech team they would have played last year is bad. This North Carolina team they would have played this year is bad. And you're right. That's not their fault. It's not their fault that the rest of the conference hadn't caught up. It's not their fault. But you gotta you gotta deal with it. Yeah. You, I mean, it's on you. Um, and I, you know, you can say it's a popularity contest. I don't. If you can't look at Alabama and look at UCF and see there is a, I mean, just a tremendous gaping wide hole between these two. You're just you're just a UCF fan that just doesn't want to believe. 
No, you know, and they keep going back to, well, they beat Auburn last year and Auburn beat Alabama. Well, Utah beat Alabama back in 2008, but in 2009, they weren't a better team than Alabama. That's right. I mean, that, that has nothing to do with anything. They played an Auburn team that didn't really care about being there. Um, I'm going to change it up real quick on you and talk about Alabama basketball. They start tonight with a exhibition game against Montevallo. We got reports over the weekend of a very, very rough scrimmage against yeah. Jacksonville State. I know you got done talking to Brian Pasnick a little earlier. What are your takes from that scrimmage? Well, I mean, I talked to Pasnick. Now, Pasnick um, is a buddy of mine, and he does a great job as a color commentator for Alabama basketball. Um, and he is, you know, he sees things with road, rose-colored glasses on occasion. But I to- wholeheartedly agree with him in this particular instance. He said, every, you know, a lot of people have called him worried about this, panicked about this, and he said, what is the big deal? This was a controlled scrimmage where there's no flow to the game necessarily. I mean, this was all about Alabama just putting puzzle pieces together to see what what works. And some things obviously didn't work. And he said, the weird thing is, he said, the only stat sheet that got out there, they played three 20-minute halves. I guess if they're if they're three of them, they're not halves, they're, they're thirds. Yeah. They played three 20-minute periods. And only the first two got out there. The third one, Alabama, won by like 20. Okay. Um, and he said that's when they, you know, they switched up some things, just toying with some ideas, seeing who can do what. Um, and he said on top of that, yes, Alabama played terrible. They, they played awful. He said, but there's some positive in that so that you can get your team's attention. I'm not – I wasn't concerned about it when I saw the stat, stat sheet. I'm not concerned about it now. I feel a little better about it, I guess, when talking to passing. But I wasn't concerned about it. I mean, I, I've seen some people tweet about it and talk about it, and it just isn't that big of a deal to me. This means nothing. I mean, I, I personally, when I was in high school and I was playing, we would set up these little scrimmages with other teams, and um, we would, you know, sometimes we'd get our brains beat in because it was almost like our coach was saying, we're going to run this, this is what we're going to do. If it work, works or doesn't work, we're doing this the whole game just to see, you know. And so it's situational stuff. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of what I, I've gathered from talking to a couple other people was, you know, we played some lineups that we're probably not going to see at any point Ever. during the year. And uh, just kind of test out, see how some guys play with each other. One positive to take away from the scrimmage is Herb Jones on the stat sheet had 18 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kara Lewis had 10. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I saw Days on Ingram had zero and – that's a, kind of a concern for me, considering he's going into his fourth year as Mr. Alabama, and really to this point, I haven't seen much development from him. Um, Alabama's going to face off against Montevallo here in about an hour. It's on SEC Network Plus, and I'm looking forward to watching that. And you know, there was a lot of people that were concerned about it and everything, but I'm really looking forward to watching Alabama tonight in a game-like mm-hmm. situation and seeing who's improved, who needs to improve a little more. Um, you know, I look for this year going into it. I think Herbert Jones is going to have a lot better year than he did last year. I think John Petty is going to be a big piece on this year's team. I think he's going to play a lot better than he did last year. And I think Dante Hall has a chance to be the best center in the SEC. Yeah, he could. I mean, there, there depends on um, how things go with Austin Wiley, obviously, uh, at Auburn. And then Kentucky's going to have a bunch of guys that they play anything from center to point guard. So um, you don't know there. But I'm not in the least bit concerned about this. Um, I think this is much ado about nothing. And, look, if they play poorly tonight, now I will say this, passing through this in there, if they play poorly tonight, okay, you can start and get your antenna up a little bit. I wouldn't still throw the towel in. This year is going to be – there's going to be a learning curve. Um, Alabama's going to have a point guard. Hopefully, Kara Lewis will be starting. But he's a 17-year-old – Point guard. He's the youngest player in the country, I believe. So he's he's going to take his lumps, but he's very quick. He's he's fast. He's smart, and so I think eventually he's going to get a lot better. And um, you know, I'm I just think people need to be patient with this team and don't even. I don't know why it's so. It's I think a lot of people are worried about it because Auburn has had some success. They won the SEC, and and kudos to them. I mean, winning the SEC is a big deal in basketball. It means very little. Yeah. I mean, it's what did you do in the tournament? That's And that's one reason I don't want football to go that route. But it's what did you do in the tournament? And guess what? Alabama and Auburn went the same distance. And guess what? Alabama, for all their problems, 
beat Alabama, beat Auburn two out of three times last year. And one time without Colin Sexton. So I feel like the team is making some strides. I don't, even if this team takes a step backwards and doesn't make the tournament this year, as long as we continue to see uh, the recruiting go the way it's going. And here's another thing. Alabama's without Jared Butler, a guy that we signed that our doctors would not sign off on for whatever reason. And, you know, I'm not accusing them of, of doing what's right or what's wrong, but for whatever reason, they didn't sign off on him and he's going to Baylor now. That's why Kira Lewis is where he is. That's why he graduated early. So he can come in and take this role. So if Butler were on this team, I might, we might all feel a little differently. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, you know, number one player out of Louisiana and, from what I'd seen from him, he was going to be a playmaker for this He's team. A he, he wasn't going to be Colin Sexton, but he was going to be about as close as you can get to being Colin Sexton. So that was a big loss. But Kara Lewis is another guy that, he, you know, in next year's class was going to be ranked right up mm -hmm. there in the top 25. He had to reclassify. We're glad he did. And like you said, we're going to have to take our lumps with him. Well, you know, it's going to be a learning curve for him because it's going to be a different level, a different speed than he's seen. But the bright side is, Everybody else is back, but Sexton and but Shannon Hale, and I'm not really concerned about no. Shannon Hale not returning. So everybody else is back. Uh, you know, you look at it, John Petty was the number one player in the state of Alabama, and I think last year it took him trying to figure out how to fit in, how to play without the ball. I'm sure that he's learned that a little bit better, and we know what he can do from the outside. I look for him to be able to drive to the goal and do some more stuff driving this year because we saw him do it in high school and was really good at it in high school, and then. Herbert Jones, I think, has a chance to be up there for SEC Player of the Year if he plays the way he's capable of playing. Well, and he's he's slated to be a high NBA draft pick. I mean, he's got all the measurables that you look for uh, in the NBA as much as anything. It, it doesn't necessarily – you don't have to score 25 points a game. If you've got the tools to be a good defender like he does and the, the wingspan and the jumping ability and all those things, he's got all of them. So, um, And if Alabama can get in there and get a trend in Watford and, and get some of these other guys going – uh, I feel like, you know, look, the program's in good shape. I, I'm not – I want Alabama to do as well as they can do in basketball. I also realize there is a ceiling for the Alabama. We're not going to be a perennial power. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't have the expectation of that. So I feel like if we can be in a position to be late in the year and we have a position to make the tournament, man, that's all I'm asking for. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I think for this team to make the tournament this year would be huge. Uh, getting close to the end here of this show, we're going to run down some predictions for this weekend's game. Who do you have in Auburn and Texas A&M this weekend? I mean, I'm begrudgingly going to take Auburn um, just because A&M is going on the road. They didn't look good on the road last week, and Auburn is coming off a of bye week. Gus Malzahn's undefeated after bye weeks. Uh, but now the caveat to that is every time Auburn and A&M play – the visiting team wins. Yeah, and, um, you know, I actually am going to go with A&M just because it is an 11 o'clock game, and Auburn never plays well at 11 o'clock. And true. I just hadn't seen enough from them offensively. I, and I know Texas A&M's had their struggles, but I just haven't seen enough from Auburn offensively that tells me they're going to be able to beat a Texas A&M team who I think has a really good defense. The quarterback that takes care of the ball the most will be the team that wins. I mean, I don't think there will be anything else. I think Kellen Mond will have his moments. I think Jared Stidham will have his moments. Both of them are prone to some bad mistakes, though. What about Georgia and Kentucky? I, you know, I picked Georgia. I'm pulling really hard for Kentucky, not because I want Alabama to play Kentucky in the SEC championship game, because I want Kentucky in the SEC yeah. championship game, and I would love that atmosphere. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I'm for Kentucky, but I'm going to go with Georgia. I just don't see that. Kentucky's going to be able to do enough offensively to hang with them in this game. South Carolina against Ole Miss this weekend. Who you got in that one? Uh, you know, I th Ole Miss, I believe, is a one-point favorite, which shocked me a little bit. I guess I'm going to just ride the South Carolina and Jake Bentley train I, probably stupidly, but I think that they have a better chance of stopping Ole Miss uh, and, and then scoring themselves rather than vice versa, because Ole Miss's defense is just so – it's a sieve. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, I'm actually going to go with Ole Miss, though. I think Ole Miss is going to be able to score enough in this game to get the victory there. I mean, it, it's a toss-up in that one and two bottom feeders in the SEC. Uh, big matchup in the Big 12 this weekend, Texas and West Virginia, and really kind of kind of determine who gets that second spot. You know, until West Virginia wins a game like this, 
I, I got to go on the other, the other direction. I like West Virginia. Um, they've got a transfer at receiver. We've got two transfers from Alabama on the team now, but um, – I, I like their quarterback. I like Sills, uh, the receiver, but I'm going to go with Texas. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Texas as well. I just hadn't seen West Virginia win a game like this, and until they do that, I'm just not going to buy in. Uh, big game in the Big Ten this weekend. For the year, you probably wouldn't have looked at this and said that, but you got Iowa traveling to Purdue this weekend. I'm going to take Iowa. I know a lot of people are going to be still high on Purdue, but I, I, this Iowa team is just sneakily solid and um, – they, they, man, that loss to Wisconsin is sure, certainly haunting them. Yeah, you know, that was a tough loss there. I saw something where Iowa, besides losing to Penn State last weekend, going into that game, they were second in the country and plays trailed this year behind Alabama with only 69. That's right. And led for a majority of that Penn State game and had a chance to win it there at the end. So I think that's a good Iowa team. I'm going to take them. Another big game in the Big Ten, Penn State and Michigan. And, that has a lot riding on that game as well. I mean, I got to take Michigan. Um, I'd like to see Michigan in the playoffs too. I just think it'd be fun uh, if you had an Alabama-Michigan or a Clemson-Michigan, you know, matchup. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm actually going to go with Penn State in this game. I think that Penn State's going to be able to score enough in this game to beat Michigan. I know Michigan has a good defense by Big Ten standards, but I just think Penn State's going to be able to do enough offensively. And then, of course, we're both going to take Alabama against LSU, but give me your score prediction for Alabama and LSU. I'll say 35 to 17. Okay, and I'm going to go with 38 to 13. Alabama. I'll take it. So Either one of them. That's going to do it for us here on the Bama Blitz. Again, we will be starting every day on weekdays starting next Monday from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. It'll be me and Luke. I'll also have me and Justin Mosley and myself and Jeremy Law. So we look forward to doing that. Starting next Monday at 11 o'clock, it'll be right before Auburn Blitz. But that's going to do it for this episode. We look forward to Alabama and LSU this weekend. Roll Tide.